Yo, it's your boy Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatics, back at you the new video. Today is Wednesday, April 17th, 2024, with your boy Ryan and the Northwest Sports Fanatics. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Smash that like button either now or on your way out. Donate to your boy if you can. Cash app, dollar sign, O-R-I-O-N-N-W-S-F, or the YouTube Super Chat right here. We got the Cincinnati Reds versus the Seattle Mariners. First pitch will be here in about 10 minutes. Let's cue the music, take a look at the thumb, and then go over the starting lineups. Let's go, baby. And on the thumb, as you can see on the left, Ellie De La Cruz, the Phenom shortstop for Cincinnati. And on the right, Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, J-Rod. Last game in the set. We're trying to go for the sweep. First series win this season for us. And uh, we're trying to go for the one, two, three. Let's start it off with the Cincinnati Reds starting lineup. All right, baby. Leading off for the Cincinnati Reds, playing second base, Jonathan India. Batting second, playing left field this afternoon, Will Benson. Batting third for the Reds, starting in center field, Stuart Fairchild. Batting cleanup and batting fourth, first baseman, Spencer Steer. Batting fifth, playing right field, Jake Braley. Batting sixth, playing shortstop, the Phenom, Cincinnati Red, L.A. De La Cruz. Elling, I see you, baby. Batting seventh, catching for the Reds, Tyler Stevenson. Batting eighth, DHing for Cincinnati, Nick Martini. And batting ninth, playing third base for the Reds, Santiago Espinal. And on the mound for the Reds, Andrew Abbott. One in one record with a 2.60 ERA. I see you, baby. Let's go. And let's get into the starting lineup for my Seattle Mariners. Leading off for the Seattle Mariners center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, J-Rod. We need you. You're still waiting on your first homer in 2024. Could we get it today? I hope so. Let's go, J-Rod. No fly zone. Your defense was amazing last night. Your hitting is starting to pick up. Let's go, Marinus. Batting second, playing right field, Mitch Hennega. Try dance up, baby. Let's go. Batting third, playing second base, Jorge Polanco. Batting cleanup and batting fourth, DH for the Mariners, Mitch Garver. Batting fifth, playing first base for Seattle, Ty France. Batting six, catching for the Mariners, big dumper, Cal Raleigh. Batting seventh, playing shortstop this afternoon, Dylan Moore. Let's go, Demo. Batting eighth and playing third base, Luis Urias. And batting ninth, left fielder, Jonathan Classe. Let's go, Jonathan, one of the new fan favorites. This is his third game in the major leagues, and he's gotten a hit and an RBI in his first two. Can he make it three for three? Let's go, Jonathan. And on the mound for the Mariners, Bryce 
Miller. And you know what time it is. It's Miller time, baby. Let's get it. Bryce Miller, 2-1 record with a 1.96 ERA. Let's go Mariners. Let's bring that electricity to the lineup. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as watching on YouTube. And make sure that you guys are taking care of your mental health. It's very, very important. Depression, anxiety, addiction. These are a lot of things that people go through on the daily. And make sure you're checking off the boxes to make sure that you can win the day. Let's go, baby. I'm ready. Matt in the building. What's good? Let's go. Let's get to 100 in donos. Appreciate the share. Let's go. And obviously a little bit of an early start anytime that we play at like 12 or 1. And uh, tomorrow we have no Mariner game. They have a day off as they get ready to play the Colorado Rockies Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So we'll either take the day off tomorrow uh, or we'll do the Kraken matchup possibly. Uh, and if we end up doing that, the Kraken play, the season is kind of coming to an end. They play the Wild. Uh, and it's on at 4 o'clock uh, Pacific time on ESPN. So we may or may not do that particular matchup. But if we do stream, that will be what we're streaming tomorrow. And then we'll get into the Rockies and the Mariners after that for a three or four game set. I haven't looked just yet. I'm going to take a peek right now. All right. So Friday, we're going to Colorado. We're playing at 540 Pacific. Saturday. We play at 5.10 on ESPN+. Plus. Sunday, we play at 12.10. And then Monday, the Mariners have the day off as we go into the next series after the Rockies. And then the Mariners will be playing, ooh, the Texas Rangers. That'll be tough. So this is definitely going to be a, a tough stretch. But hopefully we can end up getting the sweep here tonight. Let's go for this afternoon. Let's go, baby. Try dance up. Let's get it. All right, get everything queued up here. And hopefully, Bryce Miller ends up getting, you know, 8 to 10 Ks today. I'm not sure you know, what kind of start he's going to have. Again, he's kind of hit or miss like George Kirby, but I feel, you know, he's been better than Kirby and Castillo. You know, him and Logan Gilbert have been the two best on the team. So uh, hopefully we get a dub here with him. Then he can go to three and one, and hopefully he can keep that ERA below two or just a little over two. Let's go, baby. I'm ready for Miller time. First pitch is going to be here in just after the commercial break here in about two to three minutes. Let's go. Then let's try to hit the goal here today. Obviously, uh, you know, we're going to try to hit the main goal. We're trying to get to the uh, dono goal. And then obviously, I know the game is on a little earlier. So we'll try to shoot for 10 likes to start off. And then once we hit 10, we'll try to shoot for 15. And if we get more of an audience as the game goes on, uh, maybe we'll try to get to 20. But every goal, you know, on every live stream, you know, 20 to 30 likes. And then obviously trying to hit that $100 dono goal as we usually do. Shout out to everyone watching on Twitter slash X, uh, as well as YouTube. Love you, and I appreciate you. Let's go. And if you do got a Twitter account, please do your boy a solid and like and retweet the stream. It'll definitely help us get more people in the room, not only on the Twitter side, uh, but also the YouTube side. Let me take a quick check up on my pup, make sure that she's okay. And we'll get ready to go here in just about one minute. All right, my Paisley pup is killing on the couch, all relaxed. Jordan in the building, the number one Reds fan on planet Earth. What's good, my guy? Ellie and Julio going yard today. I think this is something that we both can agree on. Uh, I don't know if we're going to win today. We were really extremely lucky to win last night. You know, I, if you guys would have went with Martini, right, instead of Stevenson, and uh, obviously Taylor Saciedo is not that good, and I really got nervous there towards the end, but I really honestly feel if you guys would have went with Martini, I think you guys would have won. 
you know, he's pretty clutch against the Mariners the last two years. Uh, I mean, there's no guarantee maybe Martini would have popped up or grounded out or maybe struck out, but I definitely had a hell of a lot more confidence with Martini in the box rather than Stevenson. And you can tell me otherwise, obviously, you being the Reds professional, but it was a little odd that they did that, especially when Martini has homered off the Mariners multiple times last year. And then obviously, you know, last night in the game when he came in, he had that big play. Yeah, obviously, Ellie got thrown out at third, but still, Martini is a guy that can get RBIs. He can get singles, right? But he can also go for home run power. So I think it was a little bit of a mistake by both teams, maybe going with Sauciedo and then going with Stevenson instead of Martini. But hopefully for your case, you know, we can get home runs out of Ellie De La Cruz. I would love that as well as getting Julio as first home run of 2024. I like that idea. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Reds. I feel ya. That was one of the weirdest things I've seen in baseball this year. I mean, I could have thought of you know, quite a few people that I would have rather went with. And I'm not saying that Stevenson is bad, but I mean, if you're looking at the lineup and, you know, I try to study the lineups pretty heavily, Spencer Steer and Ellie De La Cruz are the most clutch players on the team that are usually going to lead in hits, home runs, uh, and the major statistics RBIs, right? But besides those two, you know, I think I trust Nick Martini the third most, and then maybe after that, maybe Will Benson, you know? So I, just for, you know, shits and gigs, I just can't believe that they would go with Stevenson over Martini, but again, coulda, woulda, shoulda. All right, here we go, baby. Let's start this game off with Bryce Miller, baby. Jonathan India in the box. And hopefully if Cincinnati is in that position again, they don't make that type of mistake. India fouls it back. One, two count. Top of the first, zero, zero. Bryce Miller on the mound. Jonathan India in the box. Let's go, Bryce. You know what time it is. It's Miller time. Let's go. We need you. At least we have uh, two good pitchers so far, you know, instead of just one. So... Pitch is low, 2-2 two, two count. You know, uh, you know, Logan Gilbert is our true number one. And then, you know, you got Bryce Miller as the two. Luis Castillo, man, is really sliding back. And hopefully George Kirby can start to find his way as well. You know, a lot of people thought that Castillo and Kirby and Miller and Gilbert, Wu, or Hancock, you know, would be very, very good this year. But uh, again, a very, very slow start for the Seattle Mariners. But uh, we're starting to pick it up with the hitting and the pitching. And hopefully this will be a competitive game. Jacob in the building. Happy Wednesday, my guy. Got him. There we go. Brandon in the building. What's good? Nice job, Bryce. Starting it off with the first K. I like that, baby. Bringing that electricity. You know what time it is. It's Miller time. Let's go. Nice job, Bryce. Mariner Moose coming out. 1K for Bryce Miller. Let's go for 10 tonight. I don't know if that's possible, but, you know, on the low end, let's shoot for eight. And uh, the standard, you know, for our main starters is going to be 10Ks, you know, for the first four guys. I know that's kind of aggressive, but you got to shoot for the, you know, the skies. You got to shoot for the moon, right? No one goes into the game thinking their starting pitcher is going to get 4Ks. You know, you want to shoot for 10 or more. And then if they don't hit the 10 number, eight or nine is, is solid. You know, and then even if you end up getting six or seven, you can win a game that way as long as you get a lot of pop-ups and ground outs. But on the statistical line, when you see 10 or more Ks, it definitely makes you feel good. Even eight or nine gives you a kind of a fuzzy feeling inside. But 10 or more, 10, 11, 12, 13, then you know your pitcher is raking. Let's go. I don't know. I mean, me and Jordan are hoping for it. We want Ellie and Julio to go yard. I mean, I want to see, you know, the superstar players play well. And I'm hoping both guys go yard today. Benson. Popped up. Back, back, back. Foul. Daniel in the building. What's good? Two-two pitch to Benson, popped up. Classe, boom, got it, baby. There we go, good defense. Two away.
Nice little pop out there to Colossae. Next up for the Cincinnati Reds, center fielder, Stuart Fairchild. Let's go, baby. And if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. We'll try to shoot for 10. Once we get there, we'll go to 15. And then uh, if we can get lucky and get a few more people to come through before the game's over, we'll try to get to 20. Stuart Fairchild 0 for 2 this series. Top of the first 0 0. 0 1 pitch for Miller. Popped up. Polanco with a routine play. Three up and three down. I like that. Great start for the Seattle Mariners. And pitching for the Cincinnati Reds, Andrew Abbott. Good start for him to start off the season with a 1 in 1 record and a 2.60 ERA. Let's go to the bottom of the first. Leading off for the Mariners, center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. J.P. Crawford has the day off, so that's why Julio is batting in the leadoff spot like he did in his rookie season in 2022. Batting second, right fielder, everyone's favorite, Miach, Mitch Hanaga. And batting third, second baseman, the switch hitter, Jorge Polanco. Let's go, baby. Julio, we're waiting, my guy. It's time for that first home run of 2024. Let's get it. And everyone, make sure you're taking care of your mental health. Like I mentioned before, you know, depression, anxiety, you know, addiction. These are things that a lot of people battle with. And once you feel like you're going down into the gutter, you have to make sure you know what your triggers are to make sure you can get yourself out. Make sure you're getting plenty of exercise. You know, maybe eat a little bit less fast food. Cut back on the beer and the alcohol. Make sure you're checking up on your friends. Spend some time with your pets. Make sure you're getting some exercise and some fresh air. And just making some minor adjustments to your life can be life-changing. It definitely has worked for me, and I know it can work for you. All right, baby, here we go. Let's go, Julio. L.A. De La Cruz on the phone with Julio Rodriguez. Oh, I mean, the Guardians are starting off. With, don't they have the best record in baseball right now with like 12 and 5? Well, even though Bieber Fever is out for the year with Tommy John, you guys are still hanging really tough. So I wouldn't be shocked if the Guardians end up making the playoffs. It should be something that you expect to make the playoffs. Not hope, expect, you know. Steven Kwan and company, you guys got a squad. Which is outside, one, two count to Julio. Hope everyone is having a fantastic Wednesday. And again, uh, no Mariner game tomorrow. So we'll either do the Kraken matchup at four or we might take the day off. And then, oh, diving towards first. What effort by the Reds. My God, everyone going crazy. Spencer Steer, I should have known. Steer is like, fuck that. He's like, I wanted to flip it, but the guy's not going to get over there in time. I'm going to slide towards first just to make sure to get that out on Julio. He's like, Abbott, you got to move your feet a little bit faster. Steer's like, I'll take it into my own hands. Nice out. Nice effort there by Steer. And there's a reason why, you know, him and Ellie De La Cruz are the most consistent players on the Cincinnati Reds. I like the effort. I love two-way players. You know, guys that play the offense and the defense, those are my favorite. That's why when we let go of uh, Eugenio Suarez, it kind of tore me up inside. Mitch is high. 1-1 one, one count to Mitch Hanaga. Let's go. Go, Mitch. Nice 3-1 win yesterday. 1-1 one, one pitch. Pitch is outside. 2-1 count. And Abbott being a lefty, it's going to be interesting to see what we do because a majority of our, I think, switch hitters are better. Typically, most of the time left, but some of them have been doing a little bit better right. Like Cal Raleigh and Polanco has been heating up on both sides, so... 2-2 count on Mitch Hanniger, about 300.
Come on, Miach. Whoa. Nice punch out. All right, Abbott. Haniger goes down. Make sure we're giving... We're going to give Andrew that love right there. Okay, baby. I see you with that electricity. Next up for the Marinez second baseman, Jorge Polanco. I had to hit you with the, the new photo, too, for Jorge. I really like this one, too. Nice HD 4K action, baby. All right, Jorge, be electric, my guy. I know you can hit homers from the left side and the right side. Bottom of the first, 0-0 zero, zero, Reds and Marinez. Two outs. Polanco, 194 average this season. Three homers and eight ribbies. Let's go. One for six this series. It may take him a couple at-bats to get going. 2-0 pitch. Popped up. Foul. Oh, oh, it's fair. I thought it was going to be foul. Three up and three down for the Mariners. All right, let's go to inning number two. All right, Bryce. Let's go, baby. All right, next up for the Cincinnati Reds in the top of the second. Cleanup hitter, first baseman, Spencer Steer. Batting second this inning, the former Mariner, right fielder, Jake Fraley. And batting third, you know who it is. It's the Phenom shortstop, Ellie De La Cruz. Let's go, baby. I got to take a look at some of the scores since we have a lot of action here on today. Let me take a quick peek here. You guys can see some of the scores ahead of me or above me there on the screen. All right, take a quick peek. What do we got? We got uh, Astros 4, Braves 2. Competitive matchup. We got Royals 3, White Sox 2, doubleheader of game one. Blue Jays up on the Yankees 2-0. Nats beating the Dodgers 2-0. Athletics beating the Cardinals 2-0. A lot of upsets so far. Diamondbacks 1, Cubs 0. And then we got a couple final scores. Giants 3, Marlins 1. Orioles 4, Twins 2. Orioles are money. Mets 9, Pirates 1. Brew Crew 1, Padres 0. Rangers 5, Tigers 4. And then we got Royals White Sox game number 2 of the doubleheader on at 2. Rockies and Phillies on at 3. Angels and Rays on at 4. And Guardians and Red Sox, the last game of the night for Major League Baseball at 4-10, Guardians and Red Sox. Stuart Fairchild, Will Benson, Jonathan India couldn't get it done here early on. Let's see if Spencer Steer can get it going for Cincinnati. 317 average, three homers, and 18 ribbies. We need guys like that on the Mariners, baby. He's only one for eight this series, but I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a hit or two today. He might have to wait until Bryce gets uh, out of the game, but I would assume that he could get a hit on Bryce and then whoever our guy is, you know, in the bullpen coming in in the sixth, seventh, or eighth inning. You know, it could be a two two for four kind of day for Spencer Steer. Especially if the Reds want to win this game, they're going to need him to be two for four. Same thing with Ellie De La Cruz. You're going to have to have him be two for four today as well, or better. Pitch right down the middle. Three, one count. Let's go. Let's go, Bryce. Three, one pitch for Miller. Chop towards first base. There we go. One away. Next up for the Cincinnati Reds, right fielder, Jake Fraley. The 
Kendrick right down the zone for a strike. 0 1 count. All right, we need three more people to get to 10. Don't worry, we're getting there. Let's go. Top of the second, 0 0, Reds and Mariners. One out, 0 1 pitch for Miller. Braley popped up. Ow. Go, Bryce. Pitch calm issue they're working on right now. Jake Fraley, career highs and home runs, RBIs. Last season, we'll see what he can do here at this at bat. 0 2 pitch to Fraley. Chop foul towards first base. Count still 0 and 2. He's got that Pacific Northwest look with that beard. He's got that lumberjack look, baby. 0-2 pitch for Miller. Pitches outside. 1-2 count. Let's go, baby. One two pitch from Price. Got him. There we go. Price, baby. Second strikeout for Bryce Miller. Mariner Moose coming out. Let's go. Two Ks for Bryce already. Let's go for 10. It's aggressive, but we have to be. Nice job. Way to be electric, my guy. Keep it going. Next up for the Cincinnati Reds, the Phenom, Ellie De La Cruz. Hopefully he goes uh, for a homer today. And hopefully Julio can go for a homer today just to kind of cap out the series. Top of the second, 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, Jordan. Oh, back, 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 back. Gone. Sometimes you got to talk it into existence. And that hurts, you know, but at least it's only a solo shot for us as Mariner fans. Uh, Jordan wanted it. I wanted it. We talk it out loud. And boom, shakalaka, there it is. And that might not be the only home run we get from Ellie De La Cruz tonight. We might end up getting another one. Okay, Ellie. Jordan loves it. There we go. There we go, baby. 1-0 Cincinnati. Next up, catcher Tyler Stevenson. Nice homer by Ellie De La Cruz. Man, you, you were on it today, man. Sometimes, you know, you have that gut feeling or it's been a couple games where it's like, okay, Ellie is due at some point, especially when he didn't hit for anything in the first two games. First game struggled, then got, you know, kind of a little bit better. And uh, nice to be able to see him go yard. And I'm also happy, you know, for him as a player, you know, and for the Reds fan base, but also for the Mariner fan base that it wasn't a three-run homer or like a grand slam or a two-run homer. So now at least like, okay, you did your damage, but we're still close to you. We're not, you know, we're not looking up at the scoreboard and saying, fuck, it's over already. So let's go. Nice homer for Ellie De La Cruz. I mean, I'm a Mariner fan, but I'm not a hater. You know, I like seeing greatness wherever it's at. And uh, Ellie is one of the, you know, top 15 must-see players, you know, that's in Major League Baseball right now. He might not be overall like a top five player uh, or a top 10 to some people. But, you know, for me, he's must-see TV. You know, if the Reds are playing, you're definitely going to be paying attention to his at-bats. And that was a nice one. 1-0 one Cincinnati. Tyler Stevenson in the box. In the count, 1-2. 11 home runs in the last nine games. Three this series against the Seattle Mariners. 
But the main guys that we're going to have to keep an eye on are going to be Spencer Steer, Ellie De La Cruz, and Nick Martini. Those are the guys that have the power to go yard against us. Um, you know, and then obviously I'm always going to keep an eye on Will Benson. He's kind of sneaky. You know, he might not give you all the home runs as often as those other three, but still he'll give you those crafty base hits and those clutch RBIs. So I'm going to keep my eye on him as well. Top of the second, 1-0 Reds. Two outs, one-two count to Tyler Stevenson. And hopefully that doesn't rattle Bryce that much, and I don't think it will. Now, again, if it was a two-run homer, three-run homer, or grand slam, I think it would have rattled him. But just a solo shot, that's the you know best-case scenario, not only for the Reds fans, but for us as well. How many home runs does De La Cruz have, Jordan? Is that five? Yeah, he's not struggling. He's not struggling like uh, Julio. Julio has no homers. Pitch is outside, and he walked him. Next up for the Reds, DHing today, Nick Martini. Pitch in the zone for a strike, ahead of the count. 286 average, three homers, 12 ribbies. I mean, I am just so confused last night that they did that. And it's not like Martini was struggling yesterday. You know, he actually was being positive out there. You know, obviously one for four in the series. But, you know, any anytime you know a team has got their number against another team, you know, it's like when Cal Raleigh plays against the Blue Jays, you can almost guarantee he's going to homer. You know, it's like you have to pay attention to stats and analytics. And when you know that certain players do better against certain teams and certain pitchers, you know, you want to make sure that you're up to date on that. And sometimes I feel that, you know, maybe the managers are slipping a little bit, you know, uh, and they're going, a, you know, maybe deep diving a little bit too much, you know. like analysis by paralysis paralysis by analysis like they're just trying to go too deep you know and again a lot of the teams are going to be playing checkers but the good ones play chess and they're always one step ahead yeah i believe so i think he i believe he was at four and he's at five now but someone can look that up on google or whatever and give us the correct number or they'll probably mention it in the broadcast but i could have swore i heard the announcer say that was number five Hell yeah, let's go. Spring ball for Oregon, baby. Like last night. It's just outside of the zone, 2-2 two -two count. Top of the second, 1-0 Reds. And obviously Cincinnati fans are loving that to be actually be ahead in the game instead of being down. True North Trident and Matt, appreciate you liking and retweeting the stream. Big swing in the miss, got him. There we go, nice job, Bryce. Here we go, baby, you already know what it is. It's Miller time. Gave up that homer to Ellie De La Cruz, but not another K to the resume. Let's go, keep being electric. Sometimes that's going to happen. When you got superstar players, they make big superstar plays. In fact. All right, leading off for the Mariners in the bottom of the second. The aging for Seattle, Mitch Garver. Batting second this inning, first baseman, Ty France. 
And batting third, big dumper, catcher, Cal Raleigh. Let's go, Cal. We need more homers out of you. But the one person that we're really waiting on is Julio. You know, he's the biggest name that hasn't homered, I think, in Major League Baseball so far. Lauren in the building. Moose Squad in the building. What's good? What's good, my guy? Gave up a homer to Ellie De La Cruz, but that's okay. You know, as long as it wasn't, you know, a two-run homer, three-run homer, you know, a grand salami. You know, then if that happens, we're like, fuck, you know, it's like we got a lot of ground to make up unless the bats are alive. But Andrew Abbott is pretty good. One and one record with a 2.60 ERA. So I'm not sure how many runs are going to be given up by both pitchers. I would assume four or less. And then once those guys get out, then it's a whole new ball game. And then we'll see what happens from there. But me and Jordan were kind of hoping and wishing uh, De La Cruz and Julio would go for homers today. And uh, I got him on the thumb. Ellie went for a homer. Now it's Julio's turn. Let's go, baby. Carver to De La Cruz, one away. Bring back Mike Ford. Go back, go back to the Rangers, Mitch. You're not helping us out at all. You're the worst player on the team, my guy. Like, we need to figure out, we need to either bring someone up, you know, from AAA, you know, just like we did with Classe. So that way we can replace that DH spot and put Cal there or someone else. Uh, you know, something, something, or maybe when Sam Haggerty comes back. But again, not having Tom Murphy and not having Mike Ford is really hurting us let alone not having Eugenio Suarez, Teoscar Hernandez, and Jared Kalanick. You know, they tried to just, you know, totally flip the whole lineup, but it is what it is. Oh, one pitch to tie France. Outside, 1-1 one, one count. No, I bet. I mean, shit, the Mariners didn't make the playoffs for 20 years. For, so, for small market teams like yours and mine, I mean, you'll take anything positive. You know, after we made the playoffs in 2022 and Julio Cal and George Kirby's rookie year, I think, uh, you know, it was a big like monkey off the back and a weight lifted off our shoulders. But then the expectations got really, really high that, you know, like, oh, we're going to make the playoffs every year now for 10, 15 years straight. And obviously that's not the case. So, you know, we have to take every year as a brand new year with chemistry and continuity. And sometimes it's going to take a little bit longer, especially for Seattle. Bottom of the second, 1-0, Reds. 1-2 pitch to tie. Wow, that was way out of the zone. That shouldn't have been strike three. Ooh, ooh. nice punch out by Abbott. And we're not talking Jim, but that was like a foot off the, the strike zone. What was that? If you're going to call that, um, make sure you call that us as well. Nice K by Abbott, even though it was out of the strike zone. I mean, way out of the strike zone. Not just a little bit, but way out inside of the zone. That was like an Angel Hernandez call. My God. Next up, big dumper, catcher, Cal Raleigh. Let's go, Cal. I mean, if they're gonna if they're gonna call it like that, make sure they're calling it that way on both sides, then I'm fine. But don't call it just for one team that way. But also, too, you got a lefty and a righty pitching, not two lefties and two righties. So that may have something to do with the perception of where the baseballs are landing. You know, I always thought about that for umps, you know, seeing a left-handed pitch and a right-handed pitch and, and the way that your perception is when you're knelt down in that strike zone. You know, it's probably a lot easier to make errors you know, when you have you know, that particular scenario instead of two lefties or two righties. Oh, Cal! Back! 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 Yes! Yeah. Let's go! Cal with a homer. We wanted Julio, but we got Cal, baby. What electricity batting from the right hand position. Cal Rowley. We're knotted up at one, baby. Yes! Let's go! Fuck yeah, Cal. All right, all my, all my buddies now. Dumper, baby! Let's go. Try dance up. Fuck yeah, baby. 
There we go. Way to bring that electricity, and that's exactly what we needed. And hopefully this will end up being like a 5-4 game or even higher. You know, maybe 7-6 seven, six or 6-5 six, or, you know, I don't know how, you know, it's going to be. Uh, hopefully it's not like a 2-1 game. We want more offense than this. But a uh, great start. Ellie De La Cruz homer to, you know, try to end off this series. Then you get a Cal Raleigh homer. I mean, the only thing that can make this game complete is if Julio ends up getting his first homer of 2024. And I'm hoping that happens here today. And if not, maybe it'll happen in that high air in Colorado on Friday. The moose is loose, baby. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Let's go, baby. The fucking moose is loose. Yes, sir. Dylan Moore. Oh, baby, Dylan Moore. They go for a diving catch. Go for three. Run, run, run. Go, Demo. Go, Demo. Go. A stand-up triple for Dylan Moore. Try to end up, baby. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Crazy attempt there by the Cincinnati Red outfielders. They tried to time it just right. Fairchild gambled. He probably shouldn't have done that. There we go. Yes, sir. Big swing and a miss. Next up, Luis Urias. Let's go, Luis. And hopefully he can get on base, and then we can get uh, maybe Jonathan Colasse with an RBI again. Let's go. We don't want to leave Demo stranded there at third. Let's take advantage of this little spark of momentum. Let's go. Come on, Louise. And I don't even need Louise to necessarily get a hit. He can get hit by a pitch. You can take a walk. You know, any way to get on first. Let's go. Yeah, it has happened. It's actually happened quite a bit, uh, not only to the Mariners, but also the opposing team to the Mariners uh, this season where you get an outfielder that just, you know, misreads the, the baseball or it comes down at a weird angle and they just can't get their body there in time and they dive, Superman dive for it, but they just miss it. And then it ends up turning into a double or a triple. But there you go. Abbott ends up getting out Urias and uh, we leave one stranded. But at least we got the Cal Raleigh homer. And Cal Raleigh showing he's got more power, it looks like, from the right-hand side than the left-hand side to start off 2024. I love it, baby. Two homers, and we're knotted up at one. Exciting. Let's go. Yeah, baby. I like it. All right, next up in the top of the third inning for the Cincinnati Reds, leading off third baseman, Ofero Santiago Espinal. Batting second this inning, 0 for 1 with a K. Second baseman, Jonathan India. And batting third, left fielder, Will Benson, who is 0 for 1. Let's go, Marinin. Let's take a quick peek at the stat line for both pitchers while we're waiting. Two innings pitched, one hit, one earned run, one walk, three Ks for Bryce Miller. It's fucking Miller time. And then let's go with the Cincinnati Reds and take a look at Abbott. And I like to usually do this every couple innings, so that way we can kind of see where they're at. All right, uh, Abbott, Andrew, two innings pitched, two hits, one earned run, no walks, three Ks. So it's kind of a pitching duel. Both pitchers have three Ks. Both pitchers have given up a solo jack, but it's 1-1, one, one, and it's exciting. You know, both pitchers are pacing for 8 to 10 Ks, and uh, it's nice to be able to see you know, the, the home run ball leave the park. So, you know, I mean, you're not going to get a lot of home runs, you know, typically out of the Mariners. You know, I think the most you're ever going to get out of them is maybe four in a game, you know, and that's kind of a lot. You know, most of the time it's going to be like maybe one or two or a, a shitload of RBIs, so... But exciting. Awesome for L.A. De La Cruz and uh, fantastic for Cal Raleigh. Which is outside, top of the third. 1-0 count to Santiago Espinal. 
You'll claim Espinal, but you won't uh, claim uh, Taylor Saciedo. You don't want to claim the sauce. At least he didn't fuck it up yesterday, but they definitely could have. If they would have had Sauce going against Nick Martini instead of Stevenson, that was a bonehead move. I think the Reds would have, might have, they might have been able to pull it off. They might have been able to win against us yesterday. Rice's uh, hat goes flying off his head there. 2 1 count. Top of the third, 1-1, one, one. Reds and Mariners. Ellie De La Cruz with a homer. Cal Raleigh with a solo homer as well. 2-1 pitch. Popped up. Foul. Espinal batting 148 in 2024. Bryce Miller is at 43 pitches. Let's go, baby. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help your boy out. And if you haven't smashed the like button just yet on the YouTube side, please do. We're at 10. We need 10 more to get to 20. So if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. We got an 18 uh, in the room there and another 12 on uh, Twitter slash X. We got 30 watching. Go to first. One away. Turn ahead the clock, Jersey night. First 15,000 fans, April 26th versus the Diamondbacks. Uh, my buddy Justin that I go with the Mariner games with, uh, since I have Paisley in a different living situation, uh, we would normally be going to that game together, but I told him to take his dad instead, and uh, they're going to go uh, get that turn back the clock jersey of Griffey. So I'm kind of excited for him and his dad there, and he asked me how early that they should go. If you got 30,000 capacity plus, and they're going to give away 15,000, I was like, you better get there. You better look up to see when the gates open and then get there about 30 to 45 minutes early. So that way you guarantee that you and your dad get one because anytime it's a bobblehead or a jersey and a nice one, uh, you're going to have a line. You know, there, there's not going to be that many people that especially you're going to get to see Corbin Carroll. Eugenio Suarez is coming back to town and you get a turn back the clock jersey. So I'm a little jealous of my, uh, my buddy Justin and his dad, but... Normally, we would be going to that game because his birthday is at the end of April. Mine is at the beginning of May. But uh, he gets to see the Diamondbacks and the Orioles. I will only get to see the Orioles on uh, July 4th. I might only be going to one game this year, but it'll be a good one. I'll get to see some fireworks, and hopefully I'll get like an Adley Rushman foul ball, uh, you know, or a, a Jackson Holiday, uh, or a Gunnar Henderson, or a Julio, or something of that nature. Or maybe a Jonathan Classic. Let's go. Two two pitch from Bryce. Yeah, baby. Boom. Nice K there by Bryce. Four Ks by Bryce Miller, baby. You already know what it is. Mariner Moose likes it. And you know what time it is. It's Miller time, baby. Four Ks for Bryce Miller. Keep it going. Pitch in the zone for a strike. Top of the third. 1-1 one, one, Reds and Mariners. 0 for 1 with a fly out in the first. Will Benson. O one one pitch. Benson fouls it off. Behind in the count, 0-2. 224 average, two homers, and six ribbies for Will Benson in 2024. Dribbler right back to Bryce Miller. Underhand throw. Got him. Three up and three down. Good inning there for the Mariners. All right, let's go to the bottom of the third inning. Leading off for the Mariners, left fielder Jonathan Classe. This is his third major league baseball game in the major leagues. Got called up from AAA two games ago. 
And in the Cincinnati Red Series, he's gotten a hit and an RBI in every game so far. Can he make it three for three? I fucking hope so. Batting second this inning, center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. Could we get Julio's first home run in 2024? Try and so. And batting third, right fielder, everyone's favorite, Miach, Mitch Hanega. Let's go. Try dance up. I've been waiting to use this photo. We've been putting it up for the last, what, 18 games. You know, we're, we're at 19 now. Let's try to get your homer before we get to game number 20. We might have to wait until game number 20, but it would be really sweet if we can get one here. Let's go. Well, Mariners pitching overall has been getting pretty hot. We have one of the best pitching staffs, you know, as far as the starting five. But with that being said, you know, Luis Castillo has been garbage. George Kirby has been hit or miss, but it's been kind of more miss. Um, Logan Gilbert has been fantastic, 10 out of 10. Uh, Bryce Miller has been pretty solid as the number two. Uh, and then Emerson Hancock has been bad. So we need Brian Wu to be back, uh, hopefully in the next couple weeks. So, you know... Normally we got four studs, you know, uh, you know, and then one guy in the five hole that we're hoping that can catch up to the others, right? Either Emerson Hancock or Brian Wu. But with that being said, Brian Wu is better than Emerson Hancock, but Brian Wu will still get roughed up. But the difference is, is he he's got that Luis Castillo, Bryce Miller heat where he can end up getting 10 K even from being in the five spot. So that's pretty rare. I mean, how many pitchers, you know, that are in the five spot? You know, they're fifth in the rotation that can get 10 Ks, almost none. You know, so we actually have one of the better five hole pitchers in Major League Baseball, and we just need him to improve and stop getting injured. And hopefully Brian Wu can uh, stay healthy and help us win games. But Logan Gilbert, Bryce Miller, they've been doing it. Now we just need George Kirby and Luis Castillo to get back to where they were before. And I'm not, I'm not really sure uh, if it's really been uh, you know, all pitching, Danny. Uh, I think, you know, the hitting also, you know, has definitely stepped up. I mean, you know, you, know, you get five runs, seven to ten hits, we win a game. 90 to 95 percent of the time when they don't, they lose 90 to 95 percent of the time. And we just got extremely lucky yesterday only scoring three and the Reds only got one. You know, but they could have, uh, you know, ended up, you know, tying that game up late. I think if Martini was in instead of making that substitution, for Tyler Stevenson, but you never know. One, two pitch to Classe. Got him. Shit. Nice punch out there by Abbott. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Jonathan Classe. We'll give Andrew Abbott the love. Abbott, 2.1 innings pitch, two hits, one run run, four Ks for Abbott so far. I see you. Julio, Julio. Oh, all the way to the wall and he dropped it. Go Julio. Oh, almost a home run, but hey, it's a stand up double. We'll take that. There we go, Julio. Before the Julio at bat, after the Julio at bat, baby. Yes, sir. Nice job, baby. That's the first really good strong hit ball Julio's had in a minute. Nice job, Julio. Right off the glove, too. Stuart Fairchild is fucking shit up. So Fairchild had that uh, diving miss early, and then he missed that one as well. Yeah, I thought that might have been it too. And then I thought for sure it was going to get caught. I didn't think that uh, I didn't think Fairchild would have, you know, dropped that. Some guys are not suited for outfield. You know what I mean? There's certain guys that are really, really good at it. You know, and you know, left field, right field, center field. You got to cover a lot of ground, and the sun is going to be in your eyes. You know, and uh, you know, we'll see if Fairchild plays a lot of center field after that. You know, he he might not be playing center field that much anymore. All right, Lauren. Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be back on uh, Friday. I possibly will do the Kraken tomorrow at four Pacific. 
on ESPN. But, uh, ooh, L.A. De La Cruz throw to first. Wow! What a throw by De La Cruz. It's a missile out of that arm. God, I wish the Mariners had a De La Cruz. He's awesome. Hanniger with a hard hit ball, but not hard enough for De La Cruz. He said, I, no problem. I got you. Even off of one bounce. Look at that velocity and speed. Wow, incredible. Julio's at third now. Next up, second baseman, Jorge Polanco. You know, he's got uh, switch hitting ability from the left side and the right side like Cal Raleigh. And maybe he can copy Cal Raleigh and go yard from the right-handed position against Abbott, who is a lefty here this afternoon. Bottom of the third, 1-1, Reds and Mariners in an exciting contest. L.A. De La Cruz with a solo jack. Cal Raleigh with a solo jack. Julio almost with his first home run in 2024. He's at third now after a stand-up double. And Jorge Polanco batting 190, three homers, eight ribbies. And we'll get that batting average up. And it was really bad you know, in the first 10 games. And I think within the last five or six, he's been uh, getting much better seeing the baseball. That's what's crazy, that he's so big and athletic. It's weird that he's not playing center field. Like, he should be playing, you know, center field based off his arm strength and his defense and his size. But it's kind of cool that he's playing shortstop. But most guys that play shortstop look like J.P. Crawford, you know, not like L.A. De La Cruz's size and, and stature. But that's another reason why people want to watch him because he's got such a strong arm and he's such a tall player. It just looks kind of weird, you know, for him to be uh, playing shortstop. Just like it would be weird to see like a five foot six guy playing outfield. You know, instead of playing shortstop, you know what I mean? Like, imagine seeing a little five foot six, five foot eight guy covering the ground with his speed and making diving catches out there. That would be something that would be grabbing the attention of MLB fans across the world. And maybe one day we'll get that. You know, maybe one day we'll get a five foot six, five foot eight center fielder that is just amazing that can hit home runs, that they can cover the field out there. But for now, we got the opposite. We got Ellie De La Cruz playing in the infield, and uh, it's awesome. Yeah, well, especially now with the uh, issues that you have out there in center field, you know, with Fairchild, he seems like he's a little bit of a liability on defense out there, at least for today. Got him. Another punch out by Abbott. We'll tie it at one as we go to the top of the fourth. Gotta make sure we're giving Abbott the proper love. Let's look at Abbott's stat line. All right, we got three innings pitch, two hits, one earned run, no walks, fantastic, right? Five Ks, and has only given up that one home run. And then let's take a look at Bryce as he's uh, about to get out there here for the top of the fourth. All right, Bryce Miller, three innings pitch, one hit, one earned run, one walk, four Ks. So they're combined for nine right now, and both ERAs are under uh, three. So uh, like I said, it's going to be probably a pretty low scoring affair until after these guys go out and then after they go out maybe in the sixth inning then we'll have a three inning race to see you know whoever can score the most will end up winning you know in those particular innings you know who can just race to the finish line and hopefully the momentum can start earlier than often so that way the mariners aren't down by like two runs in the ninth and all that pressure to be able to catch up so hopefully we can keep pace with cincinnati here as the game goes on 1-1, one, one, and we're going to the top of the fourth, baby. Let's go. And if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. We need four more people to get to, three more people to get to 15. And then once we get to 15, we'll try to get to 20. Let them know. And we don't want to end uh, with a goose egg on any stream that we do. So hopefully we can get at least one person to show some love before the stream is over. Or if we end up getting someone that hops in to show some love if we're not here yet. Boy's got a lot of bills. I was planning on trying to take Paisley to go get dog food and uh, body wash and a nail trim, but dog food costs, you know, 83 bucks and uh, a visit to the groomer is 35. So we're uh, 
pretty far away from that number right now. Top of the fourth, 1-1, one, one, Reds and Mariners. Pitch is high and inside. 1-1 one, one count to Stuart Fairchild. See if he can make up for some of those uh, errors in the outfield. One one pitch to Fairchild is outside two one count. Popped up. I just was talking to my buddy, so he's actually going for a two-game set like we normally do when me and him go. So him and his dad are going to see the Diamondbacks play twice, and then there's a hat giveaway from the 90s, uh, and then that turn back the clock jersey night on the other night. So I'm like, damn, man, you, you're, you're getting all, all the goodies. You know, the only thing better than those type of things is like a, a bobblehead night, so... And then we'll be going on uh, July 4th to see the Orioles. But, I mean, shit, if you're going to go see two teams play and go to three games a year to see the Diamondbacks and the Orioles, that's, that's a pretty good selection to go see. Spencer Steer, line drive. Here I is. Got him. Wow, exit velocity on that fucking Spencer Steer hit. Wow. Wow, I don't even know how the hell Louise got that. My goodness, nice defense, Louise. That could have easily been uh, an infield single. Easy. Next up for the Cincinnati Reds, right fielder Jake Fraley. Ooh, pitches inside, almost hit him. Fraley batting 415 with one homer and four ribbies so far in 2024. Down there for a strike, 1-1 one, one count. Let's go, baby. Let's go, Bryce. Pitch is outside, 2-1 count. Top of the fourth, 1-1, one, one, Reds and Mariners. Two outs, 2-1 two count to Jake Fraley on the mound, 61 pitches in. Bryce Miller. Two on pitch. Chop foul. Two two count. Two two pitch for Miller. Braley slapped the first, underhand to Bryce, got him. Three up and three down. Let's go to the bottom of the fourth inning. All right, due up for the Mariners in the bottom of the fourth. 0 for 1, DHing for Seattle, Mitch Garver. Batting second, 0 for 1 with the K. First baseman, Ty France. And batting third, 1 for 1 with a run in RBI, a solo dinger, Cal Raleigh. Let's go, Big Dumper, do it again.
And if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. We got uh, 18 people in the room on the YouTube side, 12 on the Twitter slash X side, and we only got 12 likes. So if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. We got three more to get to 15, eight more to hit the goal. And that'll help us with analytics and metrics. Uh, and obviously overall on the YouTube side. Appreciate y'all. Shout out to all the people watching on Twitter slash X, as well as YouTube. Love you and I appreciate you. And depending on what happens, you know, between now and the end of the stream, we'll determine if we stream tomorrow or not. But it's looking like I might have to stream tomorrow. But again, you don't want to have a goose egg and then another goose egg tomorrow, you know, for my mental health wise. But tomorrow, the Kraken play the wild at four o'clock. So we'll see if we take the day off tomorrow or if we end up doing the Kraken. And then we'll end up doing the Mariners on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday against the Colorado Rockies on the road. Let's go, Mitch. One forty-six average, zero homers, three ribbies for Mitch Garver. Mitch is outside and high, one-two count. One-two pitch, foul back. Count still stays one-two. Popped up for Garver. Uh, we got to get a replacement at DH. He's terrible. Worst player on the team. Next up, first baseman, Ty France. Let's go, Ty. Bottom of the fourth, we're knotted up at one, one away. First pitch to Ty France is outside, 1 0 count. Let's go, Ty. 1 0 pitch. Pitch is low and outside, 2 0 count. Two seventy eight average, no homers and four ribbies from Ty France so far in 2024. And he is looking for his first home run of. The 2024 season as well. Picked right down the middle. Big swing and a miss. 2 1 count. Pitch is outside. 2 2 count. Bottom of the fourth. Knotted up at one. Reds and Marinas. 2 2 pitch from Abbott. Pitch is high and outside. 3 2 count. Count is full. Come on, Ty. Here we go. Take that walk. Good eye. There we go. Ty right, France with the walk. Next up, big dumper, catcher, Cal Raleigh. Let's go, Cal. Takes a strike right down the middle. 0-1 count. Let's go, baby. Let's go, big dumper. One pitch to Cal. Popped up. Slide out to right. Two away. Next up for the Mariners. Shortstop, Dylan Moore. Demo with a triple after that diving attempt by Stuart Fairchild. But then he got left stranded at third. Let's go, Demo. Pitches outside, 1 0 count. Pitch 
How's that weather in Hawaii out there, Matt? Beautiful day here in Oregon. Sun is out, sun is shining. Already went for one walk with Paisley. After this game is over, we'll go for another, and then we'll do one late, late tonight around maybe 10 p.m. Right now it's 60 and sunny. Beautiful. With a little slight breeze. Bottom of the fourth, 1-1 one, one, Reds and Mariners. Runner at first, two away, 1-1 one, one pitch. Demo pops up. Benson is there. Fairchild says, let me get it. And he got it. Good thing Fairchild didn't drop it. Other well, Reds fans would have been calling for his head like Jordan. End of the fourth inning. We're still knotted up at one. Low scoring affair. And again, once Bryce Miller and Abbott go out, that's when we may see a few extra runs, you know, on the board. But so far, it's a pitching duel like it was last night. End of the fourth inning. Let's go to the top of the fifth. Leading off for the Cincinnati Reds. One for one with a run and an RBI. A solo jack. Ellie De La Cruz. Batting second. 0 for 0 with a base on ball. Catcher Tyler Stevenson. And batting third. 0 for 1 with a K. DHing for the Cincinnati Reds. Nick Martini. All right, baby. Top of the fifth. We're knotted up at one. Ellie De La Cruz in the box. Bryce Miller on the mound. Bryce doesn't want to give up another solo jack to Ellie De La Cruz. Drop foul. One, two count. 286 average. Five homers. 11 ribbies, so we were right. That was his fifth homer of the season. So he's definitely locked and loaded, not like Julio. Julio's still waiting for his first homer of the year, like Ty France. De La Cruz has got five. And four out of the five have been batting lefty, so obviously lefty is his strong side. Top of the fifth, knotted up at one. Miller, one two pitch to De La Cruz, pitches outside, two two count. Oh, Marinez. Two two pitch for Miller. Got him! There we go, Bryce. Hell yeah. Good game for Bryce Miller, baby. Yes, sir. Way to be electric, Bryce. I see you. You know what it is. It's Miller time, baby. Let's go. Next up for the Cincinnati Reds, Tyler Stevenson. 0 for 0 with a base on ball at his first at bat. 0-1 pitch. Chop towards third. Demo 
Grant got him. Two away. Next up for the Cincinnati Reds, DHing for them today, Nick Martini. Go Bryce. First pitch, Nick Martini, right down the middle for a strike looking. 0-1 count. Strikeout in the second inning for Martini at his first at bat. Bryce Miller, 72 pitches in. 278 average, three homers and 12 ribbies for Martini in 2024. Big swing and a miss off the foul tip. Behind in the count, 0-2. O2 pitch to Martini. Oh, he crushed the fuck out of that. Oh, thank God that went foul. That would have been easily a homer. My God, he crushed that shit. Got that power. Top of the fifth, knotted up at one, two outs. O2 pitch for Miller. Pitches outside, one two count to Martini. One two pitch to Martini. Got him. Oh, I guess he got a foul tip on that. So one two. One, two pitches outside. Come on, baby. Martini crushes it foul. Let's go, baby. Two two pitch for Miller. Slow roller to first. Foul. Just barely. Four point two innings pitch, one hit, one run, one earn run, one walk, five K's. I mean, besides the solo Jack from LA De La Cruz, he's been fantastic today. And the same thing could go for Abbott. You know, besides the Cal Raleigh solo Jack, he's been amazing today as well. Top of the fifth, knotted up at one, two two pitch to Martini. Pitch low in the dirt. Count is now full, three two count. Let's go! Another electric pitch by Bryce Miller. Let's go, baby. Another K. Nice job. At least we know now Logan Gilbert and Bryce Miller are two best pitchers right now. George Kirby hopefully will catch up. And I don't know about Luis Castillo, if he's ever going to catch up this season. He's really in the hole. But nice to be able to see at least half of the starters that are doing what they're supposed to be doing for the Seattle Mariners. Nice K by Bryce Miller. Five innings pitch, one hit, one earned run, one walk, six Ks. Nice job. Electric. And you know what time it is. It's Miller time. All right, let's go to the bottom of the fifth.
leading off for the Mariners in the bottom of the fifth. 0 for 1 with a K. Third baseman, Luis Urias. Batting second, 0 for 1 with a K. Left fielder, Jonathan Colasse. Let's go, Jonathan. And batting third, 1 for 2, center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, baby. Try to end up. Still looking for your first home run in 2024. Let's go, baby. We waiting on you. Try to end up, baby. We need two more people to get to 15. And if you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. We got about 20 people in the room on the YouTube side and then about 11 or 12 on the Twitter side. If you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help your boy out. We're in the bottom of the fifth. 1-1 one, one, Reds and Mariners. 1-0 pitch. Wow, nice catch by Fraley in the outfield. Good athleticism. One away. Next up for the Seattle Mariners, Triple A Phenom, left fielder, Jonathan Classe. Let's go, Jonathan. We got electricity, baby. We're still looking for a hit here today. Two hits and uh, two uh, RBIs, a hit and an RBI in his debut, and then a hit and an RBI yesterday. And hopefully we can get a hit today. 0 for 1 with a K so far with Jonathan Classe. That's a problem when you end up batting ninth in the order. Sometimes you're only going to get like three at-bats instead of uh, four or five at-bats if you hit in the top of the order. Pitches outside, 2-1 count. Come on, Jonathan. You're already one of the nice new fan favorites on the squad. Let's go. Keep that momentum moving. Pitches outside, 3-1 count. Since they started uh, tracking statistics in the minor league since 1961, he's the only player in minor league history to have 20 plus homer and over 70 stolen bags in a season last year in 2023. Popped up. Fairchild is there. Two away. Next up, Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, J-Rod. One for two with a double in the third. So waiting for his first homer in 2024. Will it be here? Let's go. Come on, baby. Julio chops it back. Behind in the count, 0-2. 214 average, zero homers, and five ribbies for Julio Rodriguez. Come on now. Pitch is high, outside, one, two count. One, two pitch. Two, two count. Suck seeing like your superstar player struggle, but I know he'll get better as the season goes on. 2-2 two -two pitch. Got him. Big K by Abbott right there on Julio Rodriguez. All 
right, Andrew. I see you bringing the electricity as well, and we're not going to hate on that. All right, let's take a look at uh, Andrew Abbott's stat line. And both of these pitchers will be going out very shortly. So we got Abbott, five innings pitch, two hits, one earn run, one walk, six Ks, a very solid day, 74 pitches in. So he'll still have one more inning after this. And then uh, Bryce Miller, five innings pitch, one hit, one earn run, one walk, and six Ks. Almost an identical stat line for Abbott and Miller. 2.42 ERA for Abbott, 1.93 for Miller. The pitching duel, just like it was yesterday, but then we were able to scrap out a couple extra runs, you know, to make it 3-1 yesterday. You know, we might end up having a similar score with this matchup when it's said and done. It could be a 3-1 game, 3-2 game. But we'll find out, you know, what kind of uh, pitching comes in after the starters go out. And if it's decent, maybe 2-1 or 3-1. If it's terrible, then uh, we might end up having like a 5-4 game or something of that nature. So we'll find out here real quick. Next up for the Cincinnati Reds in the top of the sixth. Leading off this inning, 0 for 1, third baseman Santiago Espinal. Batting second, 0 for 2 with two Ks. Second baseman, Jonathan India. And batting third, left fielder, Will Benson. How are you? Very true, but Julio and Castillo are doing like statistically the worst they've ever done, you know, at least for the Mariners, right? You know, so it's like when you look at Luis Castillo, you don't want him to be 0 and 3, 0 and 4 with an ERA of a billion, and you don't want to be like 20 games in without a home run yet. You know, especially if you're supposed to be a top 10 player, top five in popularity. And then some people think at some point if Julio can get it together and be patient in the box that he might one day be a top five or top three player, but he's nowhere near that right now. So, you know, and I, I get it. You know, the Mariners overall, we start really, really slow in April and May. And sometimes it takes us until the second week of June to get going. But as far as, you know, struggling, and being what we're watching right now out of Castillo and Julio, I mean, we've never seen them struggle like this. So, you know, normally Julio would have at least a homer by now, one or two, you know, and probably closer to like, you know, eight to 10 RBIs instead of like four or five. And Castillo normally would be at least a win, you know, at least like one and two at this point, not like 0 and three or 0 and four. So, you know, a little, a little alarming, you know, uh, based on how things are starting. But again, you know, the whole American League West is, is ass this year besides the Rangers. So, you know, and there's going to be room for us to be able to hopefully hold off Houston if they get hot at some point in the season. And then we can finish in second place behind Texas and hopefully make a wild card. So, yeah, I'm doing good. You know, just grinding it out. Just grinding out streams pretty much every day. 0-2 pitch. Check swing. Pitch is outside. 1-2 count. But we got the NFL draft coming up, which will be exciting. I'll be pumping out Mariner games on the daily. You know, if we could ever get enough uh, support to do NASCAR streams again, I would be open to that idea on Sundays. Uh, and then we have the NHL playoffs approaching as well as the NBA playoffs approaching. So, you know, we'll be mixing in a little bit of content here and there. And then obviously we have a WWE pay-per-view uh, live stream that we do every month also. Got him! Jonathan India, 0 for 11. That's tough. Big K by Bryce Miller. Let's go, baby. You already know what it is. It's Miller time, baby. Nice job, Bryce. Nice to see Bryce, you know, pitching well. Again, Logan Gilbert is our best pitcher right now. But now we got someone else to compete with him for that role to be the top guy. 
And then obviously after those, you know, will be George Kirby at three. Uh, and then obviously Luis Castillo at four and Emerson Hancock at five until Brian Wu comes back. Benson pops it up. There we go. Three up and three down. Let's go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Nice job, Bryce. Take a look at Bryce's stat line. All right, Bryce's stat line. Six innings pitch, one hit, one earned run, one walk, seven Ks. Beautiful. And he got his ERA down all the way to 1.85. That's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's Miller time, baby. Let's go. Nice electric start for Bryce Miller. And we needed that. If he was bad today, the Reds easily would have won. So nice to be able to see that. And let's see who we have coming up here. And hopefully we can get some runs. All right. Leading off for the Mariners in the bottom of the sixth. 0 for 2 with a K. Right fielder, Mitch Hanager. Batting second this inning, 0 for 2 with a K. The switch hitter, second baseman, Jorge Belanco. Let's go, Jorge. And batting third, arguably the worst player on the Mariners at this point, but hopefully he'll get better. The former world champ from the Texas Rangers, 0 for 2, DHing for Seattle, Mitch Garver. Come on, Mitch. We paid you all that money. You got to do something, my guy. You're bringing in, uh, you know, championship experience, but it hasn't carried over to the Mariners so far. Hope that uh, you feel better after your cold. You know, getting getting co a cold or a flu, it always takes a few extra days to get better. So, uh, done as in not being on the Warriors anymore. I think that that uh, trifecta is going to be blown up. You know, you're not going to see Steph Clay and Draymond playing on the floor together ever again. I don't think so. We'll see on uh, what they decide to do. You know. Like, Clay is a better player, probably, you know, to a lot of people than Draymond, but Draymond is like the heart and soul. So you need a guy like, you know, a Rasheed Wallace, a Ben Wallace, a Dennis Rodman, and he's, you know, the Ron Artest, you know, and he's essentially the Dennis Rodman of that team, and they would have won zero championships without Draymond. They need that, that presence, even though he might be one of the dirtiest players in the game. But, you know, if he's on your team, you love it, but when you play against it, uh, you hate it, you know, but... If I had a choice between choosing Clay or Draymond, I would probably be choosing Draymond just because of the extra shit that he does on the court, not besides shit talking. You know, the hustle, you know, the rebounds, the blocks. You know, uh, he's still a guy that can get you 10 points, 10 rebounds, 10 assists. You know, he's not going to get you 40 points. You know, every once in a while, Draymond might have a 20 to 30 point game, but, you know, he's uh, about doing kind of the dirty work. And uh, I feel Clay is a good player. But again, if you only can pay two out of the three, you're going to want to pay Steph one. And even though Draymond is old as shit, uh, you probably would want to pay him second. You wouldn't want to let him go. Because then if you end up keeping Clay and Steph, you're not going to win anything. You know, you'll, you'll be a good shooting backcourt. But unless you have that inside presence of that kind of bully presence, then uh, we'll see what happens. Oh, Clay and Draymond retired. Oh, I don't think they're going to retire. No, I think both will still be playing. Go to first, one away. I think Clay still feels he has something to prove, and uh, you know, Draymond likes money. You know, he has his pod podcast and whatnot, but you know, you got to think. You know, Draymond obviously helps the Warriors, and for whatever reason, if they decided to let Draymond go, you know, whenever that may be, I mean, you could add that piece to your squad, and they could. You know, help out tremendously. I mean, just imagine if the uh, you know Milwaukee Bucks picked up Draymond, and you had Draymond, Giannis, and Dame. If Giannis was healthy, that could be the difference between beating Boston or not. You know, or trying to compete with Denver or not. You know, if they made the finals. So, or or if you know someone like that ended up going to Denver, then Denver would be uh, impossible to beat. You know, they had they would have the Joker, they would have Draymond, and then you have uh, Jamal and all the rest. I mean. Uh, it's going to be very difficult to beat Denver. I know a lot of people think it's going to be Denver and Boston, but Boston doesn't have enough big men to match up against the Joker, in my opinion. So, you know, we'll see what happens. And there might be a sleeper team that knocks Boston off like Miami did, you know, a few years back. But 
I don't, I'm not sure if the uh, Eastern Conference has got teams that are good enough to match up to Denver unless Denver gets eliminated. Now, if Denver gets eliminated, then the Eastern Conference definitely can win the championship. But if Denver is the one in the, you know, the Western Conference Finals and they represent the West, I don't think you're beating Denver. I'd be shocked unless there's injuries. Wow, nice catch. Two away. Aniger, nothing. Polanco, nothing. All right, come on, Mitch. There we go, Mitch. Back, 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 gone. The worst player on the team, homers for the Mariners. Let's go. Let's go. He took that personal. He said, oh, I'm the worst player on the team. Well, yes, you are. But, hey, you hit a homer, and we love it. Yes, helping us win this game. Let's go. Fuck yeah. Way to bring that electricity, baby. The least likely person to homer for the Mariners is this guy right here, and he fucking clocked the shit out of that ball. Let's go. Mitch Garver with a homer. Solo dinger. Bring that electricity. 2-1. Mariners. Fuck yeah. Kidding me? The least likely guy to have the Mariner Moose come out and celebrate. Let's go, baby. Nice job, Mitch. First home run in 2024. Fuck yeah. Let's go. I guess every once in a while a blind squirrel gets his nut, right? I mean, it was right down the middle. Abbott it really hasn't left it hanging, you know, over the plate like that. And I'm still shocked that that happened. Holy shit. Next up, Ty France, 3 0 count. The tie. On the corner for a strike, 3 1 count. God, did that just happen? Wow. right down the middle for another strike looking on Ty France count is full 3-2 count come on baby take a walk here Ty's got good eyes and you know he gets hit by a shitload of pitches pitches outside take that walk baby there we go you might have to pull Abbott I mean I assume Abbott can you know get out of this inning but I think you're going to get him pulled here if you would have got Ty France out they would have been fine but now back to back you know batters there now, next up, big dumper, catcher, Cal Raleigh. But they had no one throwing out there. So are, are they bringing someone in or are they just strategizing? Maybe they're going to keep them out there now. I didn't see anybody in the bullpen warming up. They just got to hope that Cal Raleigh doesn't go for a two-run jack and then it's 4-1. Because if it ends up being 4-1 and Cal Raleigh homers here, we won. Yeah. Not 100%, but probably 95% chance if we go up 4-1, we're going to win. I mean, especially this late in the game, in the bottom of the set. So. All right, they're sticking with Abbott. They want to see if he can get out of this inning. Bottom of the six, 2-1, Mariners. Runner at first, Ty France. Garver with his first home run in 2024. Probably the worst player on the Mariners staff. Uh, you know, won a championship with the Texas Rangers, and we brought that championship caliber experience over to Seattle. But it hasn't been very good for us in the first 19 games. But thank God he homered there just a few minutes ago. Pitch is outside 2-0 okay. count. You can tell Abbott is fucking rattled now. Now all his pitches are outside. He just hung one right over the, the middle of the plate and got fucking roasted. And now he's scared a little bit of doing the same thing. I don't blame him. Because Cal is a, a guy that went guard on him earlier today. He's going he's gonna to be going outside and low and inside. Or low and outside. I don't think we're going to see anything hanging over the plate. And then if he walks Cal, then he'll get pulled. And now they got someone wor warming up in the bullpen. Uh-oh, Cal Raleigh with a walk. Four straight balls. He's done. 
Abbott was so good today, but it shows you how you can just fuck up for a half inning. And that could be the difference between winning and losing the game. Like, you're, you're perfect, you're perfect, you're perfect, you're perfect, you're perfect. And then you just have a couple bad, you know, pitches to a couple at-bats. And then all of a sudden, you're looking up at the scoreboard. And, and then all of a sudden, all those days and everything that you did up to that point is for nothing. Tough. It's like they're still keeping him in there. That's a little surprising. Demo in the box. Had a triple earlier today. Bottom of the six, 2-1 Mariners, two outs, runners at first and second. We do have a knack for leaving a runner stranded, though. Pitch in the zone for a strike, 1-1 one, one count. We need one more like to get to 15. If you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. Someone just did. Thank you so much. And we need five more to get to 20. Thank you so much. Like, sub, donate, comment, share. Help you play out. And anyone that's watching on Twitter slash X, I uh, salute to you as well. As well as the people here watching on YouTube. Pitch is high and outside. 2-2 two -two count. Classic David Bell, huh? He's had 100 pitches. I'm actually surprised that they kept him in. Abbott, 2-2 two -two pitch to Demo. Wow, Demo should have not swung on that. That would have been 3-2. There was nowhere near that being a strike, but a good souvenir for a fan. All right, we're in the bottom of the six. Two outs, runners at first and second. And an opportunity for Demo to open this game up. 2-2 two -two pitch. Demo pops it up behind the catcher foul. Count remains still 2-2. Two -two. Let's go Dylan. Dylan fouls that one back. Count's go 2-2. Two -two. He's fighting them off. I appreciate that focus. How are you? I appreciate the people that like on both. Oh, Demo pops it up. All right. Looks like the Reds are going to get out of it, leaving two stranded for the Mariners. The damage was done, though. And we're up 2 1. Mitch Garver, probably the worst player on the Mariners in the starting lineup. And, uh, you know, has been struggling to be able to see the ball, you know, the right type of way. But you know what? All is forgiven. He ended up getting his first home run in 2024 before Ty France and Julio Rodriguez. Who would have thought of that? And now we have a 2-1 lead as we're going to the top of the seventh. How have things been going for you, Focus? Hopefully things are going good for you. And let's see who they got up here for the Cincinnati Reds. All right, in the top of the seventh, Cincinnati Reds leading off for them. 0 for 2 center fielder today, Stuart Fairchild. Been a little bit of a liability on defense in the outfield. But uh, again, it's still a very close game. 2-1 Seattle. Batting second, 0 for 2. One of the best players on the team, not named Ellie De La Cruz. First baseman, Spencer Steer. So this is the opportunity at this point in the game where you need to get a hit or a home run to be able to get your team back in it. So we'll see if Spencer Steer can start it off for them, if Stewart can't. And batting third, 0 for 2 with a K, the former Mariner, right fielder, Jake Fraley. Let's go, Mariners. You got back from Vegas and put in your two weeks? Is that something that you were planning on doing before you went to Vegas or after what happened in Vegas and you decided? Well, I hope Vegas tre treated you well. All right, five more likes to get to 20. Four more. Appreciate that. 
four more likes to get to 20. Only four people. Let's go. The vacay up. Anything cool that you ended up doing? Any places that you ended up eating good food at? I mean, obviously, people love to gamble and, you know, go to different concerts and, uh, you know, sport venues and whatnot. Uh, what kind of food did you eat? Did you get any uh, any restaurants that you ended up going to? Or did you just eat at the hotel or the locations that you went to? Air child grounded out to third. Kirby, Gilbert Miller, let's go. Six Ks, six Ks, seven Ks per walk. Wow. Pitch right down the middle for Thornton. Thornton is in. How was the weather in Vegas? How hot was it? Was it like 90? It's sunny here in Oregon, but it's only 60, 65, but it's beautiful. Pitches outside, one one count. Steer, grounded towards third base foul. Trent Thornton is in. Bryce Miller's day is done. Let's go, baby. Top of the seven, two one Seattle, one two pitch. To Steer popped up foul. Count remains one two. Chris Angel, nice. Went to the Sphere, hell yeah. How was it, dude? Everything that I've seen from the Sphere has actually looked fucking insane. Like, I haven't seen anything bad. Any concert or any type of visuals that they have done in there has been just, like, mind-blowing. Like, I haven't heard anyone that has gone that has said it sucked. Everyone that has gone has been like, it's amazing. Got him! Big day to steer. And I, you know what I was going to say? You, had, you read my mind. I was going to say, hopefully you went to go see Gordon Ramsay's uh, Hell's Kitchen because that's where I would have gone if I would have went to Vegas. I'm a big food guy. You know, I love, you know, Next Level Chef, Master Chef, Master Chef Junior. I'm a huge Gordon Ramsay. I'm a good, you know, Food Network guy. You know, but anything that's like the cooking competition stuff with Gordon Ramsay, fuck, I'm all over that. I've been watching like all of the seasons. I just watched Master Chef Junior yesterday, the newest episode, and then the day before that, I ended up watching the latest Next Level Chef, which uh, episodes debut on Thursdays, uh, and I love that as well. That's awesome that you ended up going there. Like we had this little ESP moment. Like I didn't know about the Chris Angel, and uh, I figured you ate at the hotel as well. But that is awesome. What did you end up getting? You didn't get the Beef Wellington, did you? Obviously, that's one of the you know Gordon Ramsay you know specials there and whatnot. I mean. I know it's high priced, and uh, I know some people that have gone to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant to bitch and complain that for the price it was too much, you know. But sometimes it's just the experience, as long as the food isn't terrible, you know. But most of the people that I've talked to that have gone to anything associated with Gordon have had a pretty good experience. I think I've only had like maybe one friend that was like, you know, maybe bitching a little bit about the money or the quality of the food, but you know, it's not like Gordon Ramsay is cooking up personal. Uh, you know, personally, every dish, you know, with the amount of restaurants that he has globally. So, pitch is low in the dirt, 2-2 two, two count. Awesome, dude. I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah, Mitch Garver for the Mariners hit a solo jack. So we have three homers today. Ellie De La Cruz, 1-0 Reds, right? Cal Raleigh, homer, 1-1, tie. And then Mitch Garver just got a home run last inning and an out 2-1. Top of the seventh, two outs. Jake Fraley in the box, Trent Thornton on the mound. Well, I'm glad you got to go, man. It sounds like an epic trip, man. A good steak? Nice. What did you have? Did you have uh, baked potatoes? Did you have asparagus with it? I'm a foodie, man. You know, like, I like to be able to see meals come together, you know. What, what else was with the steak? 
like medium rare steak with with like asparagus or like baked potato? Did you have a salad on the side? Was there like what what other what other things did you have on there? I'm trying to live vicariously through you through what you're telling me. <laughs> Stop with the seven two one Seattle two outs two two count. Jake Fraley, who's 0 for 2, Trent Thornton on the mound. Two two pitch to Fraley. Stops at foul. Count remains still two two. Top towards first. Fair. There we go. Two one Mariners. We definitely gained that momentum. Let's go to the bottom of the seventh. Fuck yeah. All right, leading off for the Mariners in the bottom of the seventh, 0 for 2 with a K. Third baseman, Luis Urias. Adding second, 0 for 2 with a K. Left fielder in his third professional game in the majors, Jonathan Classe. First game, a hit in RBI. Last night, a hit in an RBI. Can get another hit and possible RBI today? I'm not sure about the RBI part, but he still has a chance to at least get a hit. Uh, it's kind of tough when you end up batting ninth in the order. Sometimes you only get three at-bats, depending on how the game goes. But hopefully he makes his third at-bat worthwhile. And batting third, we're still waiting for your first home run in 2024. Center fielder, Julio Rodriguez. J-Rod, you've been uh, getting a little bit better on your contact with the baseballs, and your defense has been 10 out of 10. I mean, you've been robbing home runs, robbing extra base hits. You've been fantastic on that side, but we're still waiting for that first homer from you, you and Ty France. We're waiting, and hopefully we get it here at this at-bat. And if not here, then we're going to have to wait into the Colorado Rocky series with that high air, you know? So I'm not sure how that's going to go. Sometimes we'll play good in Colorado with that high air, you know, uh, based on where the stadium is at. You know, it's a little harder to breathe. Uh, sometimes we'll struggle, so... Like every time I think about Colorado, I think of like Charlie Blackman in that fucking beard. You know, and, uh, we'll see on how that series ends up. And uh, again, we have the day off for the Mariners tomorrow, but the Kraken play tomorrow. So we may do the Kraken tomorrow at four o'clock Pacific. Um, unless we end up doing a baseball game that's not the Mariners. There's not very many games tomorrow. Go Hawks! Back! 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 Go on! Let's go! Josh Rojas with a homer, baby. Pitch hitting for Luis Urias Rojas. Let's go, baby. Fuck yeah, baby. Best batting average out of any Seattle Mariner, Josh Rojas, batting 353. And he's normally in the nine hole. Something needs to change. Nice job, man. Fucking A. Yeet. 3 1 Mariners. Momentum is starting to shift. Unbelievable. Next up, Jonathan Claste. Let's go. Let's go. And then after that, Julio Rodriguez. Oh, presentation. Okay. What was in it? What, what's in a quinoa salad? I haven't heard of that before. What, what ingredients are in that? Doesn't sound like a traditional Caesar, um, but it sounds good. Filet mignon, baked mac and cheese, sticky toffee pudding. I heard the pudding is good there too. How was it? Was the pudding good? 
Like I watch all. Of, I'm like a you know Gordon Ramsay fiend. You know, like I'm. I always watch all his stuff. I think he's such a good host and he's super entertaining. Um, and all his shows are good. You know, no matter if it's you know Master Chef, Master Chef Junior with the kids. I enjoy that one. Watching you know nine, ten, eleven year olds uh, baking and cooking better than ninety five percent of America. You know, and then Next Level Chef might be my favorite, where it has the three levels. Where they have like the best kitchen, the medium kitchen, and that basement it has all the old tools and, and supplies and whatnot. So let's go. And I'm happy you got to go to Vegas. I'm happy you got to go to the speeder, uh, the Thea, and I'm happy that you got some food with Gordon Ramsay. Sounds like it rejuvenated you, and uh, I'm a little jealous. No lie. Let's go, baby. Next up, Julio Rodriguez. Let's go, J-Rod. One for three with a double in the third. Takes a strike, 0-1 count. Runner at first, bottom of the seventh, 3-1 Seattle. Let's go, baby. Two eleven average, zero homers, five ribbies for Julio. That's extremely low. Like right now, you know, Julio should be batting like two eighty to three twenty. You know, five to six home runs, ten to twelve RBIs. So he's really behind the eight ball. You know, we're nine, nineteen games in. It's a little alarming, but you know, if you're expecting Julio to hit forty home runs this year, it ain't gonna happen. We're, we're gonna be lucky if he even gets to twenty to twenty five if this pace uh, continues. If he would have came out of the gates firing, then I would say, you know, maybe a good chance for 28 to 38. But, uh, you know, when you're going about 20 games in, out of a 162-game season, better get into the gear, you know. Like that one stretch where he had like 17 hits in four games. You know, we're going to need shit like that a couple times this season to bring that batting average up. And hopefully he can get locked and loaded as the weather gets better. Or when we just play shitty teams. We've actually been playing some pretty good teams, you know, to start off the season. So that's been a part of it as well. But Julio strikes out. Classe in their state where they're going to challenge possibly. I think Julio interfered him or what? Julio struck out. And Julio tried to get down. I mean, Julio swung. And then once you once you swing, you don't want to hit the catcher in the head with the bat and he ducked. So it's not like Julio stood up and interfered with the throw to second base. I mean, come on. If you got Julio out. That's exactly what you wanted, right? Clase ended up getting his first stolen bag of his career. And again, since 1961, only one player has gotten 20 plus home runs and 70 plus stolen bases in a season, and it's Jonathan Clausen. Nice job. Next up, everyone's favorite, Miach, Mitch Anaga. Let's go, Miach. Ooh, nice. That actually sounds good. You know, and sometimes for the palate, you know, instead of having regular Caesar salad or, you know, whatever your regular go-to is, sometimes it's nice to kind of maybe buy something that you normally would never buy, you know, just to kind of try it out and, and to be a little adventurous with, you know, Flavortown. And when you go to Flavortown, you know, it's always good to be able to, you know, try something new. And again, if it ended up not being good, you'll never order it again. But if it ends up being good, then maybe that'll be a, a go-to or you know, something that you'll consider next time you go. So. Sounds really good. And then what kind of dressing, was there dressing that they used with it or no dressing? Because obviously, you know, when you go to some of those fancier restaurants, some of them are gonna have dressing that goes on top and some you just kind of eat it the way that they present it to you, so. See, and now you got an idea. You're like, okay, now I just got to go to the grocery store. You know, I might not be able to make it exactly how they made it, but maybe close, you know, and then you can enjoy that for yourself at home. That's awesome. Bottom of the seventh, three, one, Mariners. Hanager rips it towards left field. Glasse, wow, what a speedster. 
from second to home in a matter of like four seconds. Bang! 4-1. Mariners. Plate is about to shit. Let's go. Anniger with an RBI, Klaase fast as shit, and that's why you need those guys that can steal the bags that have that speed. My God, he's fast. I mean, as soon as that was hit, he hit third base within two seconds, went home within maybe five seconds from being at second base. Amazing. Wow. I love the hustle. God, he's fast. Let's go. Hanniger with an RBI. I love it. Next up, second baseman Jorge Polanco. This one might be a, a sweep on the red here. It's not over yet, but we're sitting pretty comfortable now at 4-1. Unless we have an epic meltdown with our bullpen, uh, we're going to get our first series win and our first sweep of 2024. But again, the Reds are still a solid team. You know, they're 9-8. and eight. They would drop down to 9-9, nine and nine, and then the uh, Mariners would improve to 9-10. and 10, So, And then hopefully if we can beat the shit out of the Rockies, we can be above 500. No dressing. I was about to say, I don't think that type of salad has dressing, so that's why I asked. Right, but like the fruits and then the uh, pecans and whatnot, cranberries. Awesome. I actually have had a salad like that, and I really did enjoy it. Um, I had it at a restaurant, but probably not as good as yours. Polanco popped up. Oh, Fraley with the catch. Two away. That way it's just not drizzled with dressing. Because a lot of times, you know, people use dressing like ketchup. It's like when they're eating fries or whatever. And, you know, and it's like, you know, I like condiments too. You know, ranch and honey mustard and, you know, barbecue, whatever the condiment is. But sometimes people get a little crazy with the salad where it's just like drenched in, in dressing where you can't even really see what's underneath there. All you see is just like the dressing on top. You know, a little food etiquette. One for three with a solo homer in the six that started this run. Mitch Garver is up again. Oh, almost hit him. That was close. Almost hit Mitch Garver. 2-0 count. Let's go, Miach. Uh, no, but I've had I've heard of people that have had that before like that. Sounds really good. Three one count to Mitch Garver. Pitch is high and a walk. Runners at first and second. Next up, first baseman, Ty France. Still looking for his first home run in 2024. Could he get it here? We'll find out. It's crazy how in baseball, you know, the game could be close, you know, for five, six, you know, seven innings. And then all of a sudden, a couple bad pitches here and there. And then the game opens up for one team or another. And I mean, we were stuck at, you know, 1-1 for a long, long time. And then it was 2-1. Got it to 3-1, now 4-1. Let's go tie. Let him know. Let's go. Two seventy eight average for Ty France, no homers and four ribbies. Runners at first and second. Pitch in the zone for a strike. Oh one count. Hopefully we'll get at least one person to uh, show some love on the donut side before the stream ends. The worst thing that you can do, you know, as a full time streamer is not get any support. You know, especially with all the, the grind. You know, especially if it's your full time job and you got bills to pay. So hopefully we'll get at least one person to show some love before the stream ends. And, uh, and then again, then we'll decide what we end up doing tomorrow if we take the day off, uh, or we end up doing the track and match up tomorrow on Thursday at four. And then we'll be back on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, doing the matchup versus the Mariners and the Colorado Rockies. And that'll be on at 5.30, 5.30, and then at noon, I believe on Sunday.
Oh, shit. Almost hit him in the face. What's going on with this pitcher, Sims? They almost hit Hanniger in the face, and he almost hit Ty France in the face. It's one thing when you're you know, going high, but when it's like going to hit your shoulder or elbow or face, I mean, come on, man. 3-2 pitch. Another walk. All right, we got bases loaded now. Next up, big jumper, Cal Raleigh. He already hit a home run earlier today. Can he do it again for a grand salami? Open this game up, make it 8 1. Let's go, Cal. Shows you like how important a bullpen is. You know, you could be amazing with your starting pitcher, but as soon as he goes out, you know, it's a whole new ball game. And traditionally, you know, bullpen guys are much worse than the starters, and it depends if they're warmed up or not. And you know, sometimes it takes them a couple innings to get warmed up, but by the time that happens, they might have given up a few runs, and then they get pulled, and then the next guy goes in. So, bottom of the seventh, four-one, Marinez, bases loaded. With a 2 1 count on Cal Raleigh. 208 average, three homers, five ribbies for Cal Raleigh. And he did go yard earlier this afternoon. Let's go, big dumper. Pitches outside, 3 1 count. Uh oh, Raleigh walk. That just brings in an automatic run. They got to get rid of. Uh, they got to change change the pitcher. They got to get Sims out of there. This was the wrong guy to bring in after Abbott. Abbott did such a great job. And now Sims can't even hit the plate. But just bring in an extra run. 5-1 Mariners. Sorry, Jordan. Uh, I've had the same thing happen to me on the opposite side that's happening to you many, many times. So Next up, shortstop Dylan Moore. Let's go, Demo. Looks like we're going to have another pitching change. Probably about three batters too late. Lucas Sims. Man, terrible outing. But as a Mariner fan, we've, you know, we've experienced a lot of that. You know, great pitching early on, and then the bullpen just fucks it all up. So Bryce Miller has 1.85 ERA, five earned runs, and 24.1 innings pitch with 24 strikeouts in his first four starts of the season and seven career starts against National League opponents. Miller has got a 1.29 ERA, six earned runs, and 42 innings pitch. That's phenomenal. Nice job, Bryce. Tough, yeah. Long season, and you guys got off to kind of a hot start, and then, you know, obviously hit the Mariners, and it's been a tough three-game stretch for you. You know, but with that being said, uh, even with the loss, you're still 500, you know, so at least you started off strong, and even though you wanted to end up sweeping the Mariners or winning at least one or two out of three, you know, you're still in a better position record-wise than us. We're, we win today. We're 9-10, and 10, so we're just trying to climb out of the hole. Bottom of the seventh, 5-1 Seattle. Base is loaded with two out. Next up, Demo, Dylan Moore. Diaz is coming in for Sim. And hopefully Diaz will be a little bit better. Sim's ERA is 10.80. Golly. All right, let's see if Alexis Diaz can do anything there. Oh, almost hit Demo. Wild pitch. Let's 
go, Dylan. Bring that electricity, baby. Pitch high in the zone, 2-0 count. Pitches inside, 3-0 count. We're five likes away from 20. pitch on the corner in the zone for a strike three one count Dylan Moore has one career grand slam in his career not sure if he'll get one here but three one pitch right on the zone on the corner for a strike count is full three two count Edwin Diaz's brother huh Cal. Come on, Dylan. Popped up foul. Count still remains 3 2. Wow, strike three called, even though it was out of the zone. But, you know, we've already done our damage, so I can't pitch and moan and complain about it. All right, let's go to the top of the eighth for the Cincinnati Reds. We got two innings to try to get on a big rally. So if I'm the Cincinnati Reds here, I'm trying to get two runs in the eighth and then two runs in the ninth and praying that Seattle doesn't get any more. But again, normally the Mariners, when we get five runs, seven to 10 hits, we win 90 to 95% of the time. We're at five runs and we're at six hits. So there's probably a good probability we'll get at least one more hit before the game is over. And right now, Cincinnati is at one run, one hit for the game. And that was from Ellie De La Cruz and everyone else has been struggling. So we'll see if uh, anyone else can step up for Cincinnati. All right, next up for the Cincinnati Reds in the top of the eighth. One for two with a run, RBI and a K. A solo dinger earlier in the game. Ellie De La Cruz. Batting second. 0 for one with a base on ball. Catcher Tyler Stevenson. And batting third. 0 for two with two Ks. DHing for Cincinnati. Nick Martini. We wanted Julio and Ellie De La Cruz to homer today, but I don't think any Cincinnati Red fan assumed that would be the only hit that they would be getting all day at this point. A little shocking, but again, when our pitching is good, we're really, really good. When our pitching is bad, we're really fucking bad. So I think it was just one of those you know games where you hit Bryce on the wrong day. So. Yeah, I feel, it seems like it. The Mariners are like that too when we're getting beat up, you know? But at least on the bright side, you got to see an Ellie De La Cruz homer, and we got to see that together. You know, I was really hoping we could get the Julio together as well. But I mean, who knows when Julio will get his first homer? Hopefully, against the Rockies. All right, we're bringing in Gabe Spire. Got a lot of confidence in him compared to, uh, you know, Taylor Saciedo. Too much salt. Big swing and a miss from Ellie De La Cruz. Gabe Spire on the mound. Come on, Gabe. The electric, my guy. Ellie De La Cruz now going to the right side instead of going to the left since we have a left-handed pitcher. 281 average, five home runs, 11 ribbies, four homers from the left side, one from the right side for Ellie De La Cruz. Pitch on the corner in the zone, one, two count. Come on, Ellie, homer, baby. I'm a friend of greatness, baby. And even if we win this game, I wanna see the stars do something. 
be tough against Fire. He's going to have to get it right in the sweet spot, too. Top of the eighth, 5-1 Marinez. Two for eight this series for L.A. De La Cruz. Gabe Spire on the mound. De La Cruz in the box. A two pitch from Spire. Pitch is low and into the dirt. 2-2 two -two count. RJ in the building. What's good? Release the Kraken. Defend the deep, baby. Kraken play tomorrow. Got him. De La Cruz strikes out. Nice job, Gabe. Next up for the Reds, catcher Tyler Stevenson. Two twenty average, one homer, and five ribbies for Tyler Stevenson. Spire into the dirt, one one count. Pitches inside, 2-1 count. Top of the eighth, 5-1 Seattle. One out. Spire on the mound. Tyler Stevenson 0 for 1 in the box. Go, Gabe. This guy's strike zone, this ump is terrible. Like It's like a foot off the, the strike zone and he's calling strikes. But I guess he's doing it for both teams, so it's a little odd, but... Should be a 3-1 count, not 2-2. Two, two. Got him! Back-to-back -back games for Game Fire, baby. Two Ks for Gabe. I see you. Next up for the Cincinnati Reds, DHing for Cincinnati, Nick Martini. Gabe is locked and loaded right now. Nick is 0 for 2 with two strikeouts so far. They're thinking about what's for dinner tonight. What do we do? Where are we going? Who are we hanging out with? 270 average, three homers, and 12 ribbies for Nick Martini. Yeah, this hump has been bad. I mean, but it's been equally bad for both teams. You know, like I said, it's like a foot off the plate. You know, on the left hand, it died. You know, for both teams. Sometimes when you have an ump that does that, uh, it can affect the game. You know, or maybe uh, instead of a punch out, it could have led to a walk, you know? And then that could have started a rally, you know? It's hard to start a rally if you can't even get the rally started if the pitching uh, by the ump is being called, uh, you know, his particular way. I guess we got to be happy it's not Angel Hernandez, but... Got him! Dominating performance by Gabe Spire. One of the better bullpen guys that I actually like on Seattle. All right, let's go to the top of the eighth. One last opportunity for the Mariners to get some insurance, and then we'll have the top of the ninth, and we'll see if the Reds need to make up four runs or more. Leading off for the Mariners in the bottom of the eighth. One for four with two Ks. Center fielder, no fly zone. Julio Rodriguez. Last opportunity to get your first home run in 2024 against the Cincinnati Reds. Will you do it here? I hope so. Let's go, Julio. 
Next up, batting second this inning, one for four with a run, RBI, and again, everyone's favorite, Miach, right fielder, Mitch Hanniger. And batting third, 0 for 4 with a K, second baseman, switch hitter, Jorge Polanco. Go, Jorge. Let's make it 1 for 5. And make sure you guys are taking care of your mental health, depression, anxiety, addiction. You know, it's tough. I've gone through it. And, you know, if you can battle out your demons and if you feel like you're starting to go into the gutter, make sure you're making the proper adjustments every day to get out of that dark passenger to get back to your normal self. Whether that means going for a walk, exercising, eating a little bit better, you know, making sure you're listening to music, checking up on friends. There's a lot of things that you can do, uh, you know, to make those little tweaks and adjustments to make you on the right page for your mental health on the daily. Big fat. Three solo dingers today by Raleigh, Garver, and Rojas. Let's go. Pitch is outside. One one count. Oh, I forgot Rojas got put into the game. Rojas connects. Back, back, back to the warning track. Oh. One away. Good attempt by Rojas. One away. Next up, left fielder, Jonathan Classe. Let's go. A hit and an RBI in his debut two days ago. A hit and an RBI yesterday. And let's see if we can get a hit here and go three for three in his first three games with a hit. Let's go. A walk, a stolen base, and a run. 0 for 2 for Jonathan Classe. But I feel that if we didn't call up Jonathan Classe, he might have not beaten the Reds in this series. I really feel that he was that lift and that juice, that like sixth man that we needed that, you know, to, to get into the lineup and to give us that energy and that swagger. And it's carried over to these last three games. And uh, we're potentially going to win all three with him in the lineup. I love it. Little dribbler towards first. Easy out, two away. All right, last chance for Julio to hit a home run against the Cincinnati Reds. We got a day off tomorrow for the Mariners. And then they go to Colorado. They go to Denver. We go against the Colorado Rockies. Let's go, Julio. Big swing. Swing and a miss, 0 1 count. See the baseball, Julio. I mean, I don't know if you need to be watching more film, if you need to be taking more BP and batting practice, you know, but you need to be putting in more work. Four for 13 in this series. And he's been slightly getting better than he was in the first 10 games. Yeah, there we go. Go, go, go. Go, baby, go. Stand up, double, try dance up. Boom for Julio Rodriguez. Yes, sir. He didn't get a homer, but it's nice to see him connect with the baseball. Nice job. Exit velocity, 104.8. Let's go, baby. Nice job, Julio. Next up, one for four with a run and an RBI and a K, Mitch Hanaga. Let's go, Mitch. Two doubles out of Julio today. I'll take that. I mean, home runs are great, but, you know, two doubles, that's a good day. 
Yeah, definitely a solid hit for Julio. Two ninety seven average, three homers, and thirteen ribbies for Hanniger. O two pitch. Got him. All right, here we go. Last opportunity for Jordan and the Red fans. Austin both coming in. I don't have a whole lot of confidence in him, so we'll see uh, how this goes. Let's see who the Cincinnati Reds have up here in their last ditch effort to be able to try to make up four runs. All right, leading off for the Cincinnati Reds, 0-2, third baseman, Santiago Espinal. Batting second, 0 for 3 with 3 Ks, second baseman, Jonathan India. And batting third, 0 for 3, left fielder, Will Benson. And hopefully for Jonathan India's sake, he gets at least one hit. You don't want to go 0 for 12 in a series and go 0 for 4, 0 for 4, 0 for 4. I wouldn't wish that on any player in Major League Baseball. That'll fuck with your head. You know, going 0 for 4, 0 for 4, 0 for 4. So hopefully, uh, you know, he'll end up getting a hit to at least get, get a little bit of confidence. But so far, so good for the Seattle Mariners. Steven in the building, what's good? Cage in the building, what's good? RJ in the building, what's good? We got 40 people in the room. If you haven't smashed the like button just yet, please do. Uh, we need five more to get to 20. We're at 16 now. Someone just did it, so I appreciate you, whoever that was. But if you're in the room and you haven't smashed the like button, just please do. It'll help us with analytics and metrics on the channel. And uh, again, we need four more people to smash it, and then we'll get to 20. Hancock on Friday, Castillo on Saturday, Kirby on Sunday. Luis Castillo, oh, and four versus Kyle Freeland, 0 oh, and three. So I guess that's a, a benefit. And then we got George Kirby on the last game. Not the most ideal, uh, you know, pitchers going against the Rockies. Emerson Hancock, Luis Castillo, probably our two worst. And then George Kirby has been kind of hit or miss. So hopefully we can win two out of three against the Rockies. Top of the ninth, 5-1 Seattle. Both pitches outside, 1-1 one, one count to Espinal. Espinal grounds out to third, one away. Two outs away from a victory. Nice play by Rojas to tie France. Espinal is retired, one away. Next up, second baseman, Jonathan India. 0 for 11 in the series. Let's go 1 for 12. I don't got to be this, like, deceitful hater that's just trying to see guys just get into fucking misery and depression. You know, I feel for guys that end up struggling like that. So, hopefully for his sake, you know, he ends up getting on base here for his confidence. Which is high and inside, 1-0 count. Or maybe even him just getting a walk or getting hit by a pitch. I mean, it's not the same as getting a hit, but at least something positive, you know. Come on, India. Pitch is inside, 2-0 count. Maybe that walk is what they might be able to get as long as he doesn't swing wildly here. He's got three strikeouts. You might as well just not even swing and just try to see if both can even put it over the plate. So far, it doesn't look like it. Chops one foul. Good connection there. 2 1 count. Come on, Johnny. Pitch is inside for a strike, but it should have been a ball. This ump is like Angel Hernandez. He's terrible. 
I guess, you know, the normal strike zone is like, you know, it's supposed to be here for him. It's like here. It's like extended on both sides by a foot. 2-2 two, two pitch. Chopper towards third. Grounded out. Damn, Johnny. Two away. All right, they're one out away. 0 for 3. Let's not make it 0 for 4. Left fielder, Will Benson. Let's go, Will. In the zone for a strike. Oh, one count. Oh, for three with a fly out in the sixth for Will Benson. Oh, one pitch from both. Top foul behind in the count. Oh, two. One strike away from a victory here. And not only our first uh, winning series, our first sweep in 2024. 217 average, two homers for Will Benson. O2 pitch, pitches outside, one two count. Oh, almost hit him. Pitches inside, two two count. Two pitch. Benson connects, but it goes foul. Nice souvenir there for the fan. Back about 20 rows back. Might be the last souvenir a fan gets. Let's get another foul ball. Well, Benson 0 for 3. Both 13 pitches in. 5 1 Mariners in the top of the ninth. Pitches inside. 3 2 count. Count is full. Two pitch from both. Got him. Oh yeah, for sure. It doesn't matter what you know, division, you know, or where they go to school. If you can ball, you can ball in any sport. Final score: Mariners five, Reds one. Let's go, baby. GG. DG to Jordan. Mariners win. Mariners win. Mariners win. The first sweep in 2024 and our first series win. Nice job, Mariners. So we're going to end up uh, doing the, the Kraken more than likely tomorrow, Matt, uh, since we didn't get really uh, enough support on this particular stream. And I got a shitload of bills that I need to play, uh, pay up and get done. I was planning on taking Paisley to the groomer and I have to get her food and whatnot. So Kraken versus the Wild tomorrow on ESPN at four o'clock Pacific. So we're probably going to do that. And then on uh, Friday, we'll end up doing uh, the Rockies and the Mariners for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then we have a day off on Monday and then we go and do a three game set, I believe, and do the Rangers. So uh, shout out to everyone in the room for all the people that liked, commented, shared. I appreciate you. And uh, I got one question for you. We know talk sports like us, the boy Ryan, Northwest Sports Fanatic, and I'm out. Okay.